Hello friends, so today uh, let's start with this data's uh, one more tutorial. Uh, this tutorial uh, would be a little bit different from what we discussed yesterday. In my last uh, video, you might have seen that I discussed about how to create tables uh, with the help of outrec2 command. When you have run your OLS regression, then keeping all those regression results in a tabular format is very much required. And that outrec2 command helps you in doing so. Right, so before moving forward, uh, I simply urge all of you to please subscribe my channel for more videos on Stata as well as on research also that is going to be uploaded the videos are going to be uploaded every day now so I want to share as much knowledge as I can with all of you so uh, that's why this is the purpose of this channel and uh, let's continue today with uh, Stata's one very important research tool which is known as two-stage least square regression so I'll tell you today how we can perform two-stage least square regression with the help of Stata but before that you should also understand and you would also appreciate this two-stage least square regression is actually required when you have some sort of endogeneity in the independent variable if there is an if there is an endogeneity in your uh, in your model, then in that case you cannot interpret your results with precise, and your results would be biased. So to remove that bias. Two stage least square regression is required. So I'll tell you today step by step uh, what how we follow two stage least square regression to remove endogeneity in our results. For publishing our papers, endogeneity needs to be checked as well as to be dealt with. This is one very important thing to consider. Otherwise, you won't be able to publish your research paper in a good journal. So, um, let's start today. So, let's start with the, uh, the data. Data, I am taking the same data that I took yesterday on... Uh, IPO value. Again, I am importing first row as uh, as the variable names, and this is my data. Here it is. Now let's start with the ordinary least square regression, right? But before that, I am considering here that uh, if I look at the data. <coughs> So here, this is the data, and if you look at uh, one uh, very important variable that I am going to uh, consider here, which is dependent variable. Uh, here, my dependent variable is free market underpricing, right? So I'll just show you where it is. So, so here pre-market underpricing we have as a dependent variable and other variable that we want to uh, find out the regression with is another independent variable is standard deviation of recommendations. So here, this is my standard deviation of recommendation variable. This is my variable, right? So I'm considering that this variable may be a quite endogenous. Maybe it is determined by some other variable also, which I'm not considering in my regression result, right? So if I just run uh, my regression here, 
so <coughs> i just give you one example here now i am running the ols regression right so here my dependent variable is spree market into pricing right and my independent variable is standard deviation of recommendation and And I write rank dummy, technology, venture capital, these all my, are my in, uh, control variables. Right? And uh, let's take a percent standard errors and run it. So if you can look at the F value, it's 2.16, which is uh, significant at 10%. Uh, significance level and we can find out the adjusted r squared also but here the r squared value is given now here look at the standard uh, deviation of recommendation which is 0.043 right this standard deviation of recommendation is actually shows that there is some kind of an uncertainty in the recommendations of analyst which they give for the ipo initial public offering right so if there is some kind of an uncertainty in their recommendation this uncertainty is actually affecting pre-market underpricing negatively it means when there is high ambiguity high uncertainty in recommendation the underpricing decreases pre-market underpricing decreases right and there are other coefficients also which are like on the writer random it is 10 per uh, you know, significant at 10 percent others are not significant now this is the a simple OLS regression which I run between these two variables independent and dependent variable right in this case if I am just considering this particular standard deviation of recommendation variable totally independent then there is no problem in my OLS regression results and I'll, I'll consider these results as fine results otherwise if I think this standard deviation of recommendation variable is actually affected by one more variable which is omitted here which is not been considered in my regression then there is a problem then my re own regression would be spurious regression i cannot interpret the coefficients with uh, confidence right and that's why that's why we use two stage least square regression here now how do we perform it it's very important it's very important to understand that first of all if I'm saying that this standard deviation of recommendation uh, this particular variable can be determined by other variable also so what that variable would be you have to think about that right and then you have to run regression between these two variables this variable and the variable that you think can affect standard deviation of recommendation this is what we do uh, to perform two stage least square regression right so in the first stage we perform regression between this variable and the omitted variable and in the second stage we predict the outcome variable which is standard deviation of recommendation and again put it in or less regression between this variable predicted variable and pre-market underpricing variable right so this is what we are going to do today so what would be that variable which would affect this variable i just tell you here i'm saying that valuation valuation of error this variable valuation valuation of the ipo if there's an error in the valuation then that error actually may affect somewhat it may affect the uh, standard deviation of recommendation variable also right so if I run the, the regression between these two like this, I'm just copying this result here. Okay, this this particular command here. Now I'll keep I take out this free market enterprise. I'll take standard deviation recommendation now as dependent variable. My independent variable would be valuation error. Other variables will remain the same, right? And I run the regression. So this is my regression results 
Now, what would be the next step? The next step, I would again, I will predict the outcome of this variable. What is the outcome? The outcome is this standard deviation of recommendation, right? So, when I am predicting the outcome variable, it will predict all the outcome variables with respect to these all independent variables and I'm going to use predict command predict now I have to give some other name to it I'll give the name to the prediction predicted variable as suppose standard deviation of recommendation predicted SDRP and this now it has is, 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 is been uh, predicted, a new variable has been created which is strp and here you can see that here we have these fitted value, value, values, strp, new values have come up, right? <coughs> now, again this is the, this is the first stage of uh, the least squares in two stage least square this is the first stage right okay so so this is the first stage we have the we have predicted the variables now we when we have predicted now can we run the regression between the predicted values and the uh, dependent variable yes we can do that so let's do it um, Let's take this as a variable. Let's take this command. Okay, so we have free market as a dependent variable, SDRP as an independent variable, and these two are my. Uh, suppose I'm not taking this. So this this is my only my control variable, and let's run the regression. So it is not coming significant again, but at least we have. I have shown up to you that the second stage actually uh, is is being executed, and this is how we uh, apply two stage least square regression, right? So I hope this tutorial would would have helped you to learn about to learn more about the two stage least square regression. So in my next session, I'll tell you the other tools of. Uh, which actually supplements uh, the other tools which are going to supplement the ordinary least square regression method because in uh, most of the academic papers ordinary least square regression uh, generally uh, you know the reviewers get skeptical when they look at this model only they require uh, what they require is they require more uh, uh, in-depth analysis if you are using this model then they need some robustness checks also this two stage least square actually is one of the robustness check right whether your results are robust or not robust in context of uh, the data that is provided whether the data is giving you the right results or not you can check with the help of two stage least square Apart from running regression, this is required. And then this another uh, few robustness checks I'm going to discuss with you in my next video. So stay tuned, uh, uh, guys, and uh, kindly I request again to all of you kindly uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, share this video also for the benefit of those those who want to learn more about research as such as well as somewhat practical research what i'm what i'm saying is as practical research because this is something which is required to publish uh, your academic papers right so that's all from my side today uh, thanks for watching me again and uh, i'll tomorrow again i'm going to upload some more robustness checks related to ols regression with the same data so Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you.